Welcome back everyone to this lecture on how a large language model works. We're going to cover how a large language model works from a very high level overview. You should know that what we're discussing here is known as inference, not the actual training of a model. Google's already trained the Gemini model for us. Really, we're just understanding how it picks that next most likely text given some input text. Having this basic understanding of how the model works is really going to help you understand the generation configuration parameters that we cover later on in the course. Again, this is a very high level overview. So fundamentally, when we're dealing with the Gemini large language model, or any large language model for that case, we're providing some text to the large language model, and then we get some output text. So really what we're trying to answer is how do we go from our input text to the output text? What's happening inside this Gemini large language model? Well, first thing is to understand the model doesn't think of words like you and I do. Instead, it takes the input words and breaks them up into what it calls tokens. This process is known as tokenization. You'll see here that larger words are broken down into smaller tokens. This will help with different things like prefixes or suffixes, or just understanding different parts of languages. So for example, the word capital might be broken up into two parts, cap and then idle. So once we have the tokens, the train model is going to convert those into what are known as vector embeddings. Clearly, there's a lot of math going on inside of the Gemini large language model. And you can't multiply or divide words. You can't say something like, what's France divided by Paris? So in that case, we're going to need to have a mathematical representation of the tokens. So we're going from words to tokens, and then tokens to mathematical vector embeddings. The creation of these vector embeddings is part of the training process. So once we have a trained model, we can directly go from words to tokens to embeddings. Understanding this part is important because later on, we're just going to use this half of the model, so to speak, to perform what is known as RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. Now, in terms of text generation, once we have the vector embeddings, we're really asking the transformer model, what is the next most likely vector given this sequence of vectors? Which kind of makes sense. We're going from words to tokens, tokens to vector embeddings, and then I'm just asking the model, if I gave you this series of vectors, what would you say is the next most likely vector to occur? And then I could just work backwards from the vector to the token, and then the tokens to the words. The key thing to keep in mind, however, is the transformer model doesn't just think of things in a deterministic fashion, that there's only a single vector that will show up here. Instead, it creates a probability distribution of the next most likely tokens. Something to keep in mind is it's technically thinking in terms of vectors. So after performing some mathematical operations internally, at the end, you're getting a probability distribution. And then we're going to sample from that probability distribution to get the vectors. But remember, the vectors are actually just tokens that can always be transformed back into words. So we can see here that if I were to sample from this probability distribution, I would maybe have a 95% chance of choosing the token vector embedding that was connected to the word Paris. And then I would get the output of Paris. This is kind of just a made up extreme example. If you were to ask the model, what is the capital of France? And you were to take a look at the true probabilities, you would probably have something like a 99.9% .9 chance of Paris being the next word. But if you're doing something more creative, like asking for a poem, then there's gonna be a kind of flatter distribution and you're gonna get more creative outputs. Because remember, you're not necessarily choosing the most likely token. You are sampling from this distribution. So in this kind of made up case, you could have had a 2% chance of picking Versailles. Maybe that's because Versailles was a historical capital of France. So it's not necessarily guaranteed that you're always gonna get the next most likely token. Later on, we'll see that there's configuration parameters we can set to actually change and play around with this distribution because maybe you want to pick less likely tokens to get a more creative output, or maybe you always want to pick the next most likely token. Key idea here is that you're creating a distribution that you sample from, and then you can work backwards to the vector embeddings, to the tokens, to the words, to get back text generation that we as humans can understand. So what are the key takeaways that you should know? You should understand that the model internally is using tokens and not words. And the model has its own internal vector representation of these tokens, known as a vector embedding. And that the next most probable token is chosen from a distribution. That allows for what is known as stochastic results. 
That is to say, the next token is not guaranteed to 100% always be the same. In other words, it is not a deterministic process. Even for the exact same input, you can expect to get different results because you're sampling from a distribution and that can cause changes further down the line. So if I asked for a poem, I would probably get different poems even if I provided the exact same input. Later on, we're gonna explore configuration parameters and what's known as RAG with embeddings. So we can actually take advantage of the model's ability to embed words to vectors for what is known as RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. We can also edit what are known as configuration parameters. For example, we could change how we create the probability distribution for the next most likely token. All right, with that being said, let's get started and set you up with an API key to access Gemini.